So we can use that also for the students who are uh, missing this. No, they would be able to. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so nice of you, sir. Uh, How many students actually going to participate? We are looking at hundred, sir. Oh, good. Hmm. Quite a number. Ah, yes, sir. Hundred students and uh, ten faculty. Hmm. It will take actually five minutes, sir, for everyone to jump in. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Take yes. your time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Today is here our weekend. So, huh. no rush. My we, office. We, we also, sir. We also. Everyone is at home, actually. Yeah. Only. Around five, I have a meeting around two o'clock. Okay. And our national cricket team captain uh -huh. uh, just immediately passed captain who will come uh -huh. for a meeting. Okay. Just and evening there is a party I have to address. That's all. <laughs> okay. For mostly social issues, you know. Partly <laughs> architectural, partly social. <laughs> Sir, architecture is for society. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think architecture is such a social issue, you know. Yes, sir. Architecture is a social issue. Uh, rich people's issue uh, earlier. Uh -huh. Now it's an uh, issue for the common people. So yes. it's a social issue now. Yes, sir. Or we should may we should make it social issue. Otherwise, it will not sustain. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, Kanaka, can you remind the students once again in the WhatsApp groups? Sir. Just yes, remind sir. the students once again to ask them to join quickly. Uh, I'm not in all the groups. Sridha, madam, can you? Yes, sir. I'm doing it right away, sir. Uh, Kanaka, then just uh, touch base with Vishakapatnam campus. Okay, sir. So just to give you a perspective about Geetam, uh, Geetam is a deemed university, sir. It is a private deemed university, autonomous. For the last 40 years, uh, Geetam is in uh, education. More than 23,000 students study in three different campuses, sir, Geetam. Oh, really? Uh, yes. So it has uh, technology, management, sciences, humanities, public policy, architecture, pharmacy, uh, then the visual communications. So all this, sir. I got it's a big university, 20. Yeah. 20 yes, sir. The big campus should be. Yes, sir. We are ranked uh, among uh, say 1400 universities in India. We are ranked at uh, um, 71, sir. Oh. oh, so we are one of the uh, leading, yes, yeah. uh, leading universities, and um, we are aiming to become one of the global leading universities in the next twenty years. So we are trying for that, yes. and it started very small as an affiliated college, and yeah. then became a autonomous college. And then a autonomous university, sir, with three different campuses: Hyderabad, Vishakhapatnam, and Bangalore, sir. Bangalore. Yes, sir. Vishakhapatnam is the oldest, forty-two years. Then mm. Hyderabad is fourteen years, which and Bangalore is nine years, sir. Oh, okay. So, so you are now progressing. Yes, sir. Ah, yeah. Fantastic. Yes. Right. <laughs> I think we need to also think of our academic curriculum, you know, yes. now it's important. It should be in an appropriate manner. Yes, sir. And we offer, sir, our university offers open electives to everyone. So any engineering graduate, management graduate, uh, anyone other from other schools can take an elective from uh, uh, School of Architecture, sir. So oh. one of the courses that we offer is uh, green building, sir, for everyone. So green buildings is the course which we offer 
and any anyone any university student masters or undergraduate he can take that course mm -hmm. so for six uh, six months semester that is one semester four and a half months uh, that course is offered <coughs> and um, uh, there like the university is requesting that architecture school should offer some more courses so uh, we are figuring out so uh, art and architecture and some courses which can be relevant for anyone, any student, and which adds some value to their knowledge uh, about architecture. We are trying to do that. So, so it's one of the few universities uh, which offer this type of education, sir. Fantastic. Great. Right. Hmm. Uh -huh. Okay, so we are almost ready to start. Yeah, Snitta, we will start. Hmm? Yes. Hmm. So, uh, very good morning to everyone. I, architect Snigdha Roy, welcome you all of you to the Geetam School of Architecture webinar series 2022 on the topic of successful career in architecture organized by School of Architecture, Hyderabad and Vishakhapatnam campus for all the aspiring students in architecture, practicing architects, educators. And this series always uh, helps every Saturday and Sunday. And uh, there are upcoming webinars also where we, uh, like we, the series started from the August, 2022, where we have invited many guest speaker to share their journey, their experience, their value, time, valuable time, sharing about all their journey as an architect. So with indeed honor, I would uh, introduce, uh, like would like to welcome our uh, director, sir, Professor G. Sunil Kumar. And I would welcome all the uh, professor, associate professor and assistant professor and all the students who have joined today. And yes, uh, I would be really glad and thankful that uh, our guest speaker, Professor Mohammad Rafi Kazam sir has joined today. He has uh, like, I was coordinating <laughs> with his firm since many weeks. So finally he gave us this valuable time from his busy schedule. He has given, given this valuable time to uh, be accepting our invitation as our guest speaker. So it's now our time to introduce our guest speaker for this international webinar series 2022. So uh, Professor Mohammad Rafi Azar is an internationally acclaimed architect from Bangladesh who has been practicing for the past 30 years and has developed his remarkable style of green architecture in the process. His architecture is a harmonious fusion of tradition, nature, and mysticism as those cited by Leland and Tagore. He has worked on numerous projects in Bangladesh and different parts of the world such as Malaysia, Bahrain, Bhutan, India, and more. He won a line of national and international awards for his architectural contributions. Most recently, Rafi Kazam has received the Commonwealth Associations of Architects, highest honor Sir, Sir Robert mm -hmm. Matthew, Lifetime Achievement Award 2022 for his contribution in the field of architecture and education. So uh, he has done his bachelor in architecture from Bangladesh University, of Engineering and Technology, Kobe Nazrul College, HSC, and uh, his, he's also associated whatever his professional membership is a fellow Institute of uh, membership of Institute of Architects, Bangladesh, international yes. member in Malaysian Institute of Architects. And yeah. he has won many awards since 1996, 2007 to 2008, and till 2022, as recently I was mentioning that Robert, sir, Robert Matthew Lifetime Achievement Award has been awarded to him. And yes, he has also received a first prize award in uh, National Television Awards and uh, in Bangladesh and 1976 Jawaharlal Nehru Memorial Gold Medal for Shankar's International Children's Competition in India. These are his awards in painting. He has also been invited as guest speaker in numerous events and institutions to both the nationally and internationally such as USA, Australia, Italy, Spain, UK, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, India, Sri Lanka, and more. And he has also been associated as professor and faculty since uh, 1996 in Department of Architecture in various well-known universities, such as uh, 
Asana, Asna Ullah, University of Science and Technology, Dhaka, University of Asia Pacific, Dhaka, North South University, Dhaka, National University of Singapore, Jadapur University, India. And now presently, he is as professor in the Department of Architecture, PRAC University, Dhaka. He has also been a juror, invited as juror in many national and international uh, competitions. And also he has many publication works. He has been interviewed by the Time Magazine, New York Times, Vogue, Harper's, and many reviews have been conducted. So his works, both solo and group based, have been displayed in various locations across the world. And yes, there is a Rafi Kazan Travel Scholarship also, which is given to students across the world, organized by different universities, especially in Australia, Sri Lanka, and, and many other places worldwide. So, sir, it's indeed an honor to welcome you on this Zoom online platform in this international web webinar series, where we are looking forward to listen to your overall journey about all your experiences. So, thank you so much, sir. Welcome you here. <laughs> welcome to this uh, webinar, sir. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a long introduction. And I, I'm already tired listening to this introduction. <laughs> Snikdaji, yes, you have been very small. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much. I'm really honored to be here today. Uh, thank you, the University Authority, Geetam uh, College School of Architecture. Uh, it's fantastic. I heard whatever I have heard from you, uh, uh, sir. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the introduction. It's a wonderful university. Long time is, is offering wonderful uh, courses to the students. So it's my honor to share a few ideas with all of you. I'll go quickly uh, share the screen. Uh, yes. So I can share the screen. Uh, I'm not good at uh, actually technology. Sir, uh, we have already made you the co-host, so you can share your screen. Yeah. So uh, is it uh, okay that can you see yes. my screen now? Yes. Sir. Okay. okay, good. So I can go forward. Yeah. Now it's a full screen. You can see the full screen, hopefully. Yes, sir. So, okay. <clears throat> I'll go uh, sort of, you know, since for the student, it's like a, I organize things like a journey. So they can uh, learn. We also went through very difficulties and you know uh, the happiness both. So I named it uh, agony and ecstasy. So uh, there was a lot of agonies, a lot of difficulties, the early stages. Still, we are a uh, lot of challenges going through. But there are ecstasies also, you know, the happiness also. Uh, this is what you are mentioning, uh, Snegdhaji, uh, that uh, Jhalna Nehru Memorial Gold Medal. As a student, I thought I, want to be, I wanted to be an artist. So this is my watercolor in 1976, that gold medal, uh, Jhalna Nehru Gold Medal uh, winning uh, painting. But, you know, I, did, I couldn't be an artist in that sense because my father was not happy. And he was trying to make me understand that uh, artists, uh, they cannot sustain, they cannot survive. Uh, so you should go some other things like doctor, engineers, you know, like almost 40 years back, it was the social uh, sort of a stigma norm or whatever you say. So I finally ended up at Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, uh, where actually I entered into Department of Architecture without knowing it all properly, what is architecture. But my father was happy that I am going to be an engineer. So that was sort of interesting confusion among us and ambiguity. And uh, we are probably both happy. I was happy that I can continue my painting journey. Uh, but it was not actually a painting class. So I later on, I, I was facing a lot of difficulties. Um, initially, you know, I remember one of my teachers told me like, um, I can't grade you because you are below, below, below the failing grade. My teacher told me. So you understand I was facing a lot of challenges because I thought it is sort of artwork, art class, but it was not a, an art class. It was a architecture school. So I, it took me time to understand what it should be, uh, what it is actually. Anyway, in my uh, uh, starting practice 1990, when I started, 
this is the project i was thinking like i'm doing watercolor painting actually this is a court of of a um, art gallery so i was playing with the sunlight and like a brush stroke the shadow coming down like a watercolor brush and it's becoming like a painting work watercolor painting but it's as an architecture so this is how it started like a still i want to be an artist but i'm struggling but later on you know uh, i started understanding architecture is something like also poetry like one of our project you can see uh, because i wanted to be an artist so i always, always indulged with watercolor like reflection bangladesh water the green and you know like watery situation so my architecture almost like initially was like watercolor painting so you can see and i call it architecture is actually poetry uh the reason i tell you uh, this is what part of bangladesh you can see southern part of bangladesh uh, such a beautiful land with ice water based is is a in between land neither water nor land is like a, a in between uh is a mercy sort of land so you know uh, bangladesh is actually small country receiving almost 2 uh, million square ki more than 2 million square kilometer water area water coming through bangladesh bangladesh is only 150000 square uh, kilometer but is more than 200 square kilometer water area three basin ganges basin and meghna and brahmaputra all coming down through bangladesh so is already, already is flooded country with water and you see i why i call is uh, poetic architecture is poetry because when uh, monsoon comes you see bangladesh is completely is two third of the country's land is flooded is depicted water is the major element of landscape but interestingly after a few months two months you know when water recedes it leaves a fine layer of alluvial soil and the entire landscape just transform into large patches of paddy fields and then uh, wind comes and dancing with the winds so this is what i call poetry and you see our projects is like i was very interested i was very inspired uh, from our landscape so you can see the crop field and the alastonia scholar is tree you know we in call bangla chatim in i don't know hindi also call chatim tree you know there's a beautiful chatim tree and my house is small house we we, we design Uh, focusing crossing the crop field so you can see uh, uh the house the third level of the house to say almost like a roof level there is a music room there is a small party space the water body and the green lawn and then distance you can see that scholar tree elastonia so this is how i was think always like poetry and you can see uh, the house inside the house there is a boat coming because bangladesh all about boat you can see the water and boat is all inseparable so now is coming inside the urban city house the swimming pool i call it swimming pond because we have a lot of ponds i don't call swimming pool i call swimming pond so the boat is there the the steps water in the into the water the ghat lies there the tree is there uh, beside the ghat and you can see layers and layers is all green because i think every layer is the ground floor every layer is ground ground should be this is how i am connected with the ground this all old projects i think is 2010 it completed and still you can see how the light is coming and touching the wall and the concrete work that we started earlier it is all uncommon actually it's like almost uh, 12 14 15 years back when i started designing all these things it was very challenging nobody knows how to cast a concrete even so evening it it completely different then i started understanding that architecture is not only poetry is a poetic responsibility so i am getting little bit of responsible you know responsibility coming on the shoulder so that's you know i started uh, traveling and learning uh, of course i was traveling earlier but not at that extensively and now i can i would like to share this interesting view there's in singapore if you see this very international 
uh, character of the city, very glittery, very, uh, I mean, lucrative, and that is capitalism, you know, how the capitalism we, we address, all glittery, there's no problem, everything is beautiful, gimmick, magical, and the idea came is long back, I think early 60s, uh, end 50s, that globalization, interna internationalization. So we thought through global globalization, we'll be globalizing, you know, uh, all the this par uh, parity, the economic, uh, you know, parity, the love and respect, knowledge sharing, and we'll be globalizing flowers, respect and trust among the people of the world. But we, we actually globalized nothing but war. You know, uh, disrespect and distrust, we completely globalized. So this is completely a false uh, ism uh, came up in the world and destroyed our life. And then we finally, we saw that we, we destroyed the humanity. Uh, Island Kurdi, when we saw this photograph, it was like a uh, uh, goosebump photograph we saw one stage. It's unacceptable. So this is question comes now how the architects will behave, how the new generation architect will act, react. They will respond to the world situation crisis, the global crisis, glo warming, cli climatological problem crisis, all the issues coming and how to deal with all these situations. That is the same thing we have started facing as young architects. So I started learning actually how to respond, how to react, how to you know do the right sort of thing. So you see, Bangladesh is very interesting place. Is half of the country is uh, out of tropics, uh, and half of the country, southern part of the uh, country, is uh, within the tropical area. So the tropics of Cancer is going through half of the country. So Bangladesh is a very fragile and vulnerable country. It's taking huge amount of water. Is taking the wind from the Kerala when it starts raining, and from there it starts raining 3,000 millimeter rain, coming to Dhaka 2,000 and going to Silet another 3,050 millimeter, and ends up Cherapunji 12,000 millimeter. And the simultaneously, the mountain water, Himalayan water coming down from the top and crossing Bangladesh to the Bay of Bengal. So, this is what is Bangladesh. And if I work in a right way, I must learn what is Bangladesh and the alluvial soil. So our crop, we should based on crop, not on industry. So these are all things, you know, it starts to understand to how to deal with architecture. And that's why I can share one project we, we did quite early, I think 2000 and uh, in 2000, I started designing and, and ended up 2003. I was interested to analyze how the sun moves actually. In the wind, in the in this particular context of Dhaka, sun actually inclines uh, southern side almost 43 degree from the ground. In the winter, 22nd December, you can see like that, and then gradually it comes up on the vertex in the summer. Uh, and the monsoon it goes uh, it starts from uh, northeast sun and ends up northwest. And only two days of the year, uh, March and September, it on the vertex sun travels but it goes uh, southern side, south east to south west, sun, sunset, an inclined sun. So all these issue, very important to understand how to lit up the house, how to create the uh, uh, enlightened house, and the sun movement of the year also very important. So in the summer, it comes from southeast direction. So we must understand climatology to make our house sustainable. So you can see how we developed the house at that stage. 2003, it was a challenge for us to keep uh, this huge trees on the fifth level of the house. And we, we call swimming pond, not swimming pond, pool actually, but it is a swimming pool with all technologies there. And we have like, uh, I can, uh, this is what we can see the tall trees in the fifth level of the house. Uh, how the detail we have done uh, look, 20 years back, actually. And then uh, I started moving uh, other parts of the country, other, other countries to work. So I need to create impression of Bangladesh. Bangladesh was a poor country, you know, at the time. It was one of the poorest countries in the world. And then Bangladesh 
not now poor country. It's almost like a 40th or 43rd richest country of the world out of 200 countries. Uh, but it was like uh, we're very poor. So I need to create impression that Bangladesh is coming up. So we took the responsibility of uh, like ambassador to create to impact create impact of our country good good name good fame good face so this is in Malaysia so I'll not explain I'll just go through because I'll come to a real point later so this is what we have created the huge water body actually is only uh, only I think uh, 100 and, uh, 200 millimeter depth no depth it's a very shallow water body. 350 cars below the roof of this water body, but we created because to catch the uh, Malaysian rain mostly here for firefighting and to make the whole environment as much as possible cooler, you know. So this is the building we designed. I think uh, first building in Malaysia, private, first private or second building in Malaysia, which got certified uh, uh, that uh, highest certification, platinum certification deed. So this is done by one Bangladeshi architect was really uh, create an impact in Malaysia. And this is what you can see the water body actually is a very shallow water body, eight inches deep water body. And this is the upper floor courtyard. Uh, again, the water body is there because Chinese clients always like water, movement of water like a money movement. So they have a, a you know, a Bastu Shastra sort of thing. So they love, love it, uh, the water movement. So this project, I'll uh, share a little bit detail. Uh, Bangladesh Embassy in, in uh, Bhutan. You know. Our relation, Bhutan and Bangladesh relation is very interesting actually. Historically, like many thousands of years, Bangladesh and Bhutan is related because of its water connection. All the, because Bhutan is famous for its Life as lifeline, Himala is the lifeline of Bhutan. And uh, Bangladesh lifeline is water, but the whole water coming from, from Himalayas. So Bhutan and Bangladesh always related through water channel. Of course, through India, the water coming to Bangladesh, not directly from Bhutan. But its origin, basically origin, philosophically is originated in Himalaya means Bhutan. So this is how Bangladesh is already connected for many thousands of years. So we are trying to understand how Bangladesh and Bhutan is connected so we can design a proper building for us because the land belongs to Bhutan, but the building belongs to Bangladesh. There's a marriage, how to create the marriage between two countries and strengthen the political and diplomatic relationship. And you see we, why Bhutan, probably whether you don't know or you know or don't, I don't know, that Bhutan is the first country who actually recognized Bangladesh as a sovereign country before even six, six hours ahead of India. And India tried to many years to stop it, to make it that India is the first country to recognize Bangladesh. But finally, after many years, Bangladesh gadgeted that no, it was Bhutan who actually uh, recognized Bangladesh as a sovereign country. The reason why, Bhutan was always trying to help Bangladesh because they thought or they think Bangladesh is the country who actually gives them, offer them or presented them this Buddhism to Bhutan. And Bhutan got it from Bangladesh. That's why they celebrate this uh, religion through Bangladesh. That's why they love Bangladesh. Now question comes, how Bangladesh become uh, the source of inspiration or this or origin of this uh, Buddhism. Why not India? Actually, it is India, not India. It's Otis Dipankar, even, even in the 11th century, who traveled to Tibet as, a, as Dalai Lama, was the first Dalai Lama who didn't took it uh, as address, but he actually the first Dalai Lama. Uh, and he actually flourished all over the world Buddhism, northern side. And little, little lower Bhutan received this Buddhism from Tibet. And southern side, like Myanmar and Australia, all went from Bangladesh directly, the Buddhism. Because Buddhism's hub was Bangladesh for many thousands of years. Uh, because India, after Ashoka, India actually not received Buddhism properly. Actually, they all ran away from India 
because they are in threat after Ashoka he died. And then they came to Bangladesh and they settled down Bangladesh and many thousand years, for 5,000 years or 4,000 years, they flourished Buddhism from Bangladesh to all over the world. So that's why Bhutan is always a uh, very lovely, good friend to us. And we wanted to create that sense. So we, this is our site. This is our site was facing the Himalayas, uh, a green part of Himalayas. And there's a river down. So they are, I think there is a Supreme Court or one of my good friend, Christopher Benninger, who did that. So my project is opposite Christopher's uh, project. And we have a fantastic view of the green Himalayas. And we also studied that uh, the temperature in, in summer is only 17 degree around, which is fantastic. You know, 70 degree temperature, lovely temperature in summer. But in winter, it goes down like three, four degree uh, Celsius, which is needs to be addressed. But if you see, interestingly, the sun part diagram is always uh, southern side. Even June, uh, where it is Bangladesh is on the vertex, in Bhutan, it's uh, actually crossing the line on the southern side. So we don't take much uh, sunlight uh, in the summer. We don't need uh, temperature is 70 degrees fine. But in March and December, it goes further and further south. You can see the baseline and 39 degrees Celsius, uh, the drop, the sun. So we can take inclined sunlight inside the house if we open up the southern side. So the glass will be, we, we want the glass should be touched by the sun and greenhouse effect inside the house. So in the winter, we can reduce the heating uh, cost basically. So this is how we develop the idea. And this is a sketch facing the uh, view and uh, the house. And this is what we created a small water body that we call it Bay of Bengal. Because the water is coming from Himalayas, all the water from Himalayas, this side, not the China side, this side, it actually ends up in Bay of Bengal. And we are the owner of the Bay of Bengal, basically. Uh, so. But never Bay of Bengal seen her mother, the creator. So we create a small water body. We call it Bay of Bengal. Now the Himalaya can see the piece of water from Bay of Bengal. And now they both touched each other. Each other. Now this is how uh, I'll share how the reflection coming to the Bay of Bengal of the Himalaya. And they are connected now. And then first time they're seeing each other, the creator and the created. And we also, there is a rule that any embassy, like Indian embassy, you can check that there's nothing to do with Himalayan architecture, Bhutanese architecture. They have done their own way. So that's the right, that's the law of the country. Any embassy can do their own way, there's no rule. But any house beyond embassy, they have to follow Bhutanian rules. They cannot build whatever they feel like. But we told them, no, we want to follow, we want to respect your architecture language because we want to be friend of yours and don't want to create something like out of the blues. So this is how we uh, design a courtyard, water court and houses surrounded. And this is what we created at a big puncture also on the street. So because the view was beautiful earlier, when we build something, we actually create a OPEC scenario. We don't, people don't see the, uh, the distance heal anymore now. So we don't want it to do so. We wanted to create an aperture to show them how beautiful the landscape is actually. So the puncture is created accordingly. So now still you can see the Himalaya distance in a, in a framed way. And this is what the Bay of Bengal created and reflection of the uh, mountain or the small mountain created reflection. And of course our, prime, our, our father of the nation's uh, bust is there. Uh, because I think the Fidel Castro says, I haven't seen Himalayas, but I have seen Sheikh Mujib. Because though both are them, both of uh, both are Himalayas actually. So now they are together also. So we create togetherness actually, the country's togetherness, the landscape, the history, and everything togetherness. So this is a place actually I visited Hyderabad once to see Hyderabad campus of. Uh, Aga Khan Academy, as I remember, 
uh, before my design started. So we did that with uh, my partner was uh, FCBS, uh, British partner. So the whole idea came from the, uh, you know, when they asked me uh, what is the typology or language of a school or history of, a, of your school in Bangladesh, then I started with, we have schools or the Buddhist monasteries, all the great universities actually. So those are all square, the, the monks rooms all around and the middle is the, you know, uh, stupa sort of thing. So we created similar things, the square all around the school in the middle, the Maidan, and that's the spirit. So this is all inspired by this Mahasthan God. And we have many actually, we have thousands of similar things. So this is what we, the, we did the sketches. And this is what we created. And our client, His Highness the Aga Khan, always wanted us to do a mastery of the brickwork, the Bengal brickwork, and all co coming from uh, Mahasthan Gaur and all the archaeological sites. So that's the archaeological sort of thing we created. And this is what is already started school, some part. So I don't have much photographs. So I can share a few of them here. So this is what the school uh, uh, classroom part. Because you see, there's always school should be didactic. I mean, school can teach you without classroom. Classroom is for teacher, not for students. They go there, teacher, academic knowledge they acquire. But when they come out, they actually started learning. They're laughing. They're sharing other ideas. They can learn from anywhere, sunlight. They can learn from trees. For example, this four trees called Dhak tree, which is actually Bhutia Menasperma. Uh, it's a palace full. I, I'm sure you know that palace full is a red flower, flame of the forest. But local name is Dhak tree because Dhaka name came from this tree that is a legend from the Mughals. So we planted the tree so children can learn the Dhak tree uh, is came because of Dhaka, it should be Dhak tree. So this is how we created landscape also. And this is the inside. So first level courtyard, the helicunia, and uh, bokul flower. The jali work on the southern side, all brick jalis. Some detail. And we did one mosque. This now I'm starting working in the old part of Dhaka with the political leaders. You know, the the mayor, uh, the mayoral project. So that's a big, uh, the, you can see the green spot. That's the mosque area, which is uh, uh, one third of an acre land. But the whole area, big area, that's a graveyard. So there's a graveyard and the mosque in the front road, a uh, small area. What should be the mosque in the, beside a graveyard? Because the old part of Dhaka, there are many Mughal mosques. So there's a legacy should be there. The Mughal mosque was a very successful mosque. They did, but there's no legacy left, uh, left earlier. So we wanted to connect 400 years legacy to current time. So we created a mosque with the brick, but we opened up the uh, mosque in two parts. You know, we cut down mosque, two parts. One is service mostly, one is the served area. And the middle is opened up, is actually connected from the street to the backside, the graveyard. So the plaza, the shan that created by the Mughals, we, we, we took from there the, in the middle space, is actually threshold space. In between the terrestrial life, the daily life on the street, the noisy life, and the other side, silent life, the graveyard, there's the celestial life. So that mosque actually connecting the terrestrial and celestial. This is how we created the connection between two worlds. So that's my middle of the space you can see. And uh, one side is a mosque, another side mostly the services, the ablution, the toilets and stairs. An interesting part is why I'm showing it. When you do the political projects, you will see very interesting thing. Our father of the nation's photograph, our prime minister photograph, you can see on the top, is the smallest. And then second layer is the mayor is the middle and others the local leaders. 
are their bigger photographs and the biggest photograph is our contractor actually he was he was the contractor and he is also the local uh, the uh, the government party uh, chairman or commissioner so his photo is the biggest it means he is the boss you have to follow his uh, rules he is the boss of the area you can't you know di dictate him so this is how they used to work but in our case we took a different strategy we met with them we sat with them in my office i asked them to come and we make them understand that if they use power they will be loser because they don't know the how to do the construction properly and they misuse and end up with you know stealing the money and a poor project i can train his people in a way they will do the best job in a shortest possible way in a good management they will earn more money and good project they will become famous they will become very uh, i mean popular they will become a good contractor they will get more more projects and truly happened he started with a like uh, very small like 1 million dollar project he used to do now he is doing like 100 million dollar project nowadays so now you can see the mosque uh, uh, after doing the mosque the uh, one side is graveyard other side you see the amount of development you can see huge the city is old city hugely developed so the mosque in the middle of the hugely developed and no development other side you can see it feels like absolutely you know a uh, neat and clean and silent sort of environment trees and plants and greens but the other side is heavily built so this is the juncture of two connection so mosque is actually connecting so now you can see from the street you can see the graveyard and you can see the same uh, the the contractor who did the fantastic job actually we thought it's impossible to make the big glasses and the brick work everything was done very nicely so inside the mosque the light is coming from the upper level and the whole area is there is no mihrab no puncture you know to the for imam's place the whole area is for imam we call them imam is the leader he should have a fantastic place all all glass floor light coming from the heaven he is a light and and he can lead us there's no small space for him separately so you know I, there are technical issues also but other side you can see the graveyard the greenery and this is the women's uh, small space for prayer normally not much happen this thing but we provided women's place also we also doing uh, now the whole master plan of the south city we have two city actually uh, two mayors southern side and northern side so southern side is 109 square kilometer area we are we are planning i'm acting as a chief architect of the whole thing bangladesh you know 2000 years back 2000 year 1 it shows the united nations uh, you know uh, document shows the bangladesh means the bengal this area was the richest country of the world and india was the second richest country in the world italy was third and greece was fourth so can you imagine bangladesh was the richest country in the world these are very inspiring for us we didn't even know that when we started researching we got all this information and also bangladesh is the only point connecting the australia to the west world all connection the asian highway is connecting actually dhaka is the point bangladesh is the point where you can connect otherwise there is a water or or mountains you cannot cannot connect so bangladesh is actually the most important uh, area for the world the recent research says if the world is one country then bangladesh and dhaka particularly would be the capital of the whole world so these are all important information for us so dhaka should be dealt with very carefully because our climate you know half of the country is tropical not tropical so like a evening the evening is always like uh, not a day no night 
you know, uh, is very vulnerable, very fragile, very small time it, it gives you. No, you have to deal with very sensitively. So Bangladesh is a very sensitive country in that sense. And we have uh, colorful history. We have uh, theological issues, you know, uh, very harmonious religious uh, connections. We have uh, archaeological and historical uh, evidences. But we have also heavy traffic, crowded issues in unmanaged city. And we have very dirt, dirty city. So all these things we are actually taking care of. So this is our territory and this we are trying to make it very green. We are, we are investigating all the CS map, RS map, SA map, Moja map, everything. And we are recovering all the green channel, all the water bodies we are recovering. And you know, all political influences are there, but still we are uh, recovering all those things and green patches we are recovering. So I'll go my last project, uh, uh, old city related to this sort of master plan. But this one project, we did 31 projects in older part of Dhaka. What happened, you know, all the uh, old part of Dhaka green spaces or parks or playgrounds, all actually devastated, all illegally occupied, either by Pakistan or, you know, the drug addict people occupied or illegal construction happen over there and children cannot play. Uh, water logging create, uh, started creating a lot of issues, you know, mosquitoes, dengue, and uh, antisocial activities. Everything started happening last 50 years, all damaged, gradually all disappeared actually. So the last mayor actually, when it started 2016, there's a program uh, taken. Uh, of course, I was uh, main person to discuss with them. Uh, to how to recover all these things. So we need new philosophy, new idea to not to fight of the fight with the uh, antisocial people, political leaders and the community people. Let's how to make very amicably how to make it happen. So one project I'll share with you, which is a Rasul Bak Shishu Park in Ajimpur, which recently United Nations uh, uh, declared is one of the best project 21 whole world and air magazine then it started public place this become one of the three most important projects uh, and published in air magazine uh, in, i think in august september this is the only way you can go to the park there's no other way there's no other way you can't take car you can't take rickshaw tricycle and in in monsoon it's flooded it's very difficult to go there even so this is what we finally went through that path to the park and they call it a park. This in front of the parks, uh, the sort of road, but no car can come, no rickshaw can come actually. And the left hand side, you can see the grills, all the shops. Uh, these are all illegal shops. Inside there is uh, actually the park. You can't see even the park. And you can see now uh, there's the only drain, uh, the right hand side. The only drain to take out water, the city corporation drain, there's no uh, WASA, the water development board, uh, anything. So 19 houses were coming to this drain and one rain is flooded. And then sewer is floating around the life sewer. Life is horrible for the last 30, 40 years here. And there's no solution, completely out of solution. So what to do as an architect, how we can act actually, how we can respond, how we can deal with the situation. And this is inside the park, you see, there is an illegal building happened and nothing happening is uh, anti-social activities happening, nothing else. And the whole park, you see very poor quality. And then you see how the people will come, how the children will come and play here. This is so dangerous and so dirty, unbelievable actually. And then we started talking to the community, the young generation, separately young generation, the local community, the, uh, the uh, political leaders and the, uh, I mean, religious persons, all the separate, separate group, because there's a fight between groups. If the one, one together discussion, they'll fight each other. So we started talking separately, then we asked them to come together. 
and this is what the local community the same road we, you have seen that we sat together and then finally we showed them shared the idea how we want to build uh, uh, develop the situation what we have done actually we came up a solution that i think three things we must do one is dismantle the any boundary wall existing around the park because boundary wall uh, actually give you wrong information and create lot of anti social and illegal activities one is people think that they are not trusted then there's no respect and trust because community people's park but they are refrain to come inside the park there is a gate there is a lock there is a sign board saying uh, the park will be open from 6 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock in the evening uh, that mean you are you are restricted and then after uh, you know evening time or dark time people are not going there but all the illegal people are going there for drug abuse or drug selling happening over there so in the morning there is no place to go there you can't go there actually the whole situation is devastated so dismantle all the walls because we must tell people that we trust you we respect you we can come any time 24/7 to the park because it's yours it is not city it belongs to city corporation so one thing second thing we must manage the rain water because rain water clogging mosquito happening and nobody is going there again the problem will come the anti social people or or naughty people will go there only so we must manage the water and then a uh, third is you make it in a way that you manage community people can manage it actually properly lit it up nice trees over there benches over there so uh, we can create a, a small coffee shop we can create a library we can create a gym so the community people go there and spend time over there so you can see the walkway we have developed that is actually below there is a trench so the whole trench can collect 100000 liters of water of rain water and we calculated based on 250 mm rain uh, can take place one day one per hour so that's the calculation so this is how we develop the trench and then take all the water so you can see the two trenches are there i can go forward yeah you can see the trench is so deep so we can collect the rain water and the dirty water from the uh, the city drain is separated now so they are not mixing up together together so i can filter the water and then we can disperse the water distribute the water to the community as a drinking water and we can supply the water to the mosque, mosque nearby or the building near uh, the building we have the and the illegal building we convert it later on and now we can see we started working the trench cutting started and then you can see the trench is there and uh, uh, water collection started uh, one monsoon one come when came actually and this since there is nothing can go inside we can take the material inside very difficult so we started building 1100 pieces of this slabs only and it resolved all problem actually so finally we dismantled the the boundary wall it was a difficult task there's a lot of shops are there illegal shop we convinced them to go to the other side of the uh, road and rented the house so they become uh, legal rather than illegal so finally we dismantled the wall and now we can see the same place is uh, open it's a very old photograph i'll show you the new photograph and this is what is now happening the field is uh, beautifully done and the all the water is collected below the walkway you can see the slabs are there and then when is rain coming it was earlier rain is a pain any rain they are all afraid the one week two weeks they cannot go out the children cannot go to school properly and every hassles are there but the rain is now no more a pain it's a celebration so i was talking to sunil sir that uh, earlier uh, we are talking about sustainability but i don't want to talk about sustainability i feel like myself very poor i want to talk about celebration of life 
we must sustain that's the basic line but our target is to make our life celebration so now you see the children are celebrating the rain they are not afraid of rain this is what i took a photograph earlier during my research time and now the same wall same tree as are there you can see the same place now is completely transformed and all the plants actually is planted by the local children we didn't plant anything actually we just organized everything but they planted everything so and planting was like all the very indigenous uh, fruits like uh, balmis apple or custard apple or star fruits every tree actually is uh, the fruit coming like hundreds and thousands not few so children can eat without fighting each other <laughs> and birds can eat also birds can come and children and bird they can be friends together and our slogan was Ch children will run after butterfly not drugs mm -hmm. that is our motto mm -hmm. now you can see the adolescent girls are coming out normally i'm sure in india also in bangladesh like similar adolescent girls are usually don't come as if they are they don't exist in the city or the area they are all disappeared but now you see our watching we are watching that adolescent girls are coming out in their own group or alone they are playing themselves playing themselves safely that means that place is safe now you can see uh, like a park that develop and people are coming with their children and from the distance you can see the whole area is transformed like a full of happiness and from the distance we can see this was the uh, illegally built uh, small building i don't know how to transform there's a political leaders office so it was very difficult for us to get them out let tell them go out we want this building but i we did it i had a very tough time Uh, but still i am surviving uh, <laughs> i suppose not to sub survive sort of now we transform the building into very beautiful uh, small club uh, women's club and then the all plants room like treatment plant water treatment plant and pump room everything ground level upper level library and counselors office and the third level is the gymnasium and fourth level the roof is a small coffee shop the plan is here also and this is what we can see now the whole area and children are coming uh, smiling and you know library is uh, full of uh, children now and library is very popular now very popular library and the women's club you can see some women say in the uh, in the muslim women they don't love to come to walk around alone you know they used to come to the in the room with their own group the chatting the children can come uh, with them also they have a uh, uh, music instruments uh, they have uh, small books to read and the small uh, play equipments for the uh, uh, small children and this is what is still outside you see there is a threat is very challenging outside is still so dirty but you can see the peeping view inside is really nice and inside as beautiful actually but it needs lot of maintenance and government policy there is no maintenance i don't know about india but in bangladesh the whole philosophy is no maintenance you built it and leave it <laughs> and then is destroyed so same here so finally i failed to make our political leaders to understand that we should move forward but they always saying me we we are moving forward give us time give us time it's like 3 4 years gone so finally last few years we develop our own team this is our our office team their librarian their cleaner their gardener everybody is there and they are doing it so beautifully that's become an example actually so now you see the old photograph one side the water full of water and the other side is absolutely no water in the monsoon and this is what is a very beautiful life over there and the water people are collecting that is the most famous 
a popular place now. All around water people are coming. Every day, probably 500 people coming and collecting water from here. And this last two and a half years, no record of uh, any water and bone disease over there. I mean, for taking water, there's no problem coming up because every six months we're testing the water. So you see the old photographs I shared earlier, the, the mosque was behind, was a very shabby condition. And the slabs, now you see the slabs are placed in front of the mosque. Mosque has been a little bit of screened up because we didn't have money actually. That's very carefully we detailed out to screen up only the mosque to make it very neat and clean. And it is space for them to extra in the Jumma prayer, they can come out and use the space. I did my Jumma prayer with them to mm. make them understand that I'm with them in a raw uh, earthen space, very dirty space with the daily newspaper was, you know, placed and I was praying over there. But now we can pray nicely. And then you can see after 15 years, they had a Eid Jamaat. It was uh, very emotional. And the whole idea is to, why we do architecture? We do architecture to make our children's face a smiling face, to see our children's smiling face. That's the whole idea of doing everything. You become an economist, you become a, anything, engineer, you become a doctor, architect, the whole purpose to make our other people happy or very basically our children are growing up happily. That is our, at the end of the day, the only thing we must do. I think we are doing, we're trying to do that thing, making them very, very happy. And I'll end up just last three minutes slides. I mean, uh, video is there, which was made for United Nations. Uh, I'll share and then I'll end my uh, lecture. So I am starting that. Uh, अच्छा ये तो किसी के किसी के I think there's a small problem. Uh, I can't see full screen. Yeah, it's all right, sir. Just, just a minute, please. Uh, yeah. I, so this video is available on YouTube, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can. You, you can uh, yeah, so yeah. We will, yeah, I will figure out signal. Okay. And, uh, okay. uh, uh, so we can, we can end up our uh, session here. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, sir, like it, it was a wonderful presentation and the way you um, uh, made architecture as a celebration and then the way you uh, linked architecture to society, uh, it was marvelous, sir, and very inspiring. And um, uh, maybe the close uh, cultural relations and uh, being a, a part of a uh, huge nation, India and Bangladesh, I've been, we have been seeing uh, it uh, like whatever you were showing us it was seems to be like in india only so i think all our students will definitely be inspired to uh, figure out solutions that uh, you have done sir uh, especially the park uh, is a wonderful experience for anyone and any anyone would definitely relate it that that kind of work and uh, definitely if someone gets a chance to do that 
uh, every architect should do this. So we can, at least from School of Architecture, Hyderabad, there should be 100 such parks. All our students should get inspired and get involved in, uh, because definitely there are parks that are like that in India, and we can transform them to what you have done. And uh, your belief in uh, celebration, yes, beyond sustainability, uh, architecture has to be celebration. And uh, yeah. from your home till this uh, park and yeah. that uh, mosque also, sir, I have seen it. Uh, your architecture is actually celebrating and we all can celebrate those spaces. Uh, it's a wonderful experience uh, that you have shared with us. And uh, I'm sure our students uh, would have understood the depth at which uh, an architect can uh, work. Uh, very inspiring. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will. I will. I would like to add to Sunil sir's uh, point, sir. Like from the slide, uh, what you have shared from the first slide, like a and from an artist, a simple mm -hmm. artist who does watercolors, to the immediate next slide that is itself is also like an art but you have seen that art to materialization uh, in the profession that's the beauty of architecture you explained it brilliantly sir brilliant but both slides if you see side by side nobody can make out the second one also it is as good as a watercolor painting the shades of that <laughs> courtyard fantastic fantastic <laughs> the depth of that uh, shades and all that's the beauty of architecture sir and the, the way you have contributed to the society country and the and seen the development of Bangladesh as one of the richest growing countries uh, in, in, in the world is fantastic, sir. That as an architect, how you are doing that. And the way you are balancing the projects to the political pressures and their fame or their greed to do stuff, but you are able to uh, convert that into public places, benefiting public places by involving youngsters and uh, balancing the lo local uh, power uh, volunteers to contribute because everybody has that zeal to giving back to country and they, everybody has that patriotism, most of the countries. But once you touch that as an artist and architect, the sensibility, they will woke up. That's what you did really and made it, you have proved it. Even yeah. though the surroundings were still in the same stage, you set an example like, see, this is what an artist and architect can do. That's a very inspiring uh, work, sir. And uh, the kind of arbitrations you did to make illegal things to legalize, that's the best thing an architect can, uh, you know, uh, do in any, 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 any architect's life. Uh, converting something which is, you know, taken for granted, but with a lot of honesty and uh, chance you have taken to make it, yes, this is the possibility, let us do. So that, that's a very inspiring thing. And the right uh, statement you did, sir, like pains to celebrations. Everybody mm -hmm. has pains, but architect, once an architect involves in any of the issue, he mm -hmm. definitely makes it as a celebration. He yeah. will make sure everybody, the solution will, uh, you know, will be a celebration. Amicably making everything possible uh, is the simple role of an architect and uh, mm -hmm. uh, great, sir. It's a great presentation and we all are glad to see and meet you, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Nageshwar ji. Thank you very much. I would like to add a little thing with you that uh, time has come that we must uh, come out from ego towards eco. <laughs> from eco, yeah, ego. That should not be space place for ego now. Yes, we sir. must go for ecology. We must go for uh, understanding people. Our enemies are actually maybe you think my enemy may not be your enemy. No. Enemy is not common. Like one enemy of mine is enemy of the world. No, mm -hmm. my enemy is friend of others also. So actually we are all friends. So we must work in a way that our enemy also celebrates. <laughs> it should be architecture should be win-win situation. In the current world, if yes, you sir. create architecture of division, mm -hmm. then you will never be able to make society uh, more or less happy. You know, okay. we must do win-win situation. Architect is happy, other people happy, even our enemies happy, our animals happy, as much as possible to, with honesty, we must work. Definitely we will not be able to do 100%. That's not possible. 
but our effort is 100% possible. Effort had, must be 100%. Yes. But the result may be 50% or 40% or 80%. I don't know. But when we do, don't do the effort 100%, how come we expect the result will be uh, close to 100%? Yes. So philosophy change, I think. Or I believe we should change our philosophy. Exactly, yeah. sir. And the best example you gave is that the that the building existing in that park <clears throat> in any country it's a taken for granted. First, they will demolish the existing yeah. building, <laughs> and they'll think of what to do. But you have uh, you already expressed that it, you went a level of threat for your uh, entire uh, career and uh, life also. But you stood for the cause and the, with a lot of honesty, and you yeah. ultimately achieved it. That's the best thing. Yeah. I can understand what might have happened and all the yeah. stuff. <laughs> so that, that's what the beauty of safeguarding a cause or a reason. You yeah. stood by that and it, it, it actually gives goosebumps. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Snigda, are there any questions? Uh, students? Hmm. Oh. Thank yes. you so much, uh, sir, for your uh, wonderful sharing your wonderful uh, experience and your thought process. It was really incredible. And uh, each part, like each thing which was being discussed by you, was which was being uh, incorporated well, and it was very amazing. So I really thank you, sir. So uh, mm. like I would request all the participants to clarify their queries through chat and by or by unmuting my sensors. We invite you all for the question answer session. So please everyone uh, feel free to ask questions. And uh, sir, if you allow, uh, shall I stop your screen sharing? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, sir. Uh, stop share, yes. Yeah. Please yes. everyone, you can uh, uh, interact with uh, uh, Professor Rafi Kajam, sir. Or you can chat. You can put in our uh, questions in your chat box. Everyone is welcome. Yeah, I, I, I just share one thing. Uh, I'm just on the verge of completion of another project, which is a large, like a, a big area, like almost like a, uh, more than half a kilometer area. Uh, I'm, we are developing. Uh, I started with a small part, only a field, play field. But when we went there, there is a Hindu uh, crematorium, open to sky crematorium beside the river, which actually now under threat because a lot of people uh, moved there because Dhaka was a less populated earlier. Now it's a, it's a densely city of the world, one of the densely populated city. So a lot of Muslims are over there and naturally they don't like when they are burning bodies in an open to sky uh, area. So that created a lot of tension between them. So I stopped working as an improve, improvement of the field area only. I came to government bag. I went to government bag and asked them, please, we need to develop a crematorium, a proper crematorium with a proper machine. They, they can burn the body nicely uh, without carbon, uh, burning the carbon, you know. Uh, and then we must open up a pond, they say already, uh, filled up with the dirty dirt. So that should be opened up so they can go and they to do the rituals, the Hindu community do the rituals. And there is a tomb also, Muslim tomb. That should be, that is dilapidated. That should be properly maintained and enlarged with the library, coffee shop and other things, you know, gymnasium, all these things. So the whole community can celebrate, whole community can come together and celebrate their life. I'm so lucky that our even our prime minister went out to the highest body ethnic uh, for the budget and she was so happy. She, she said, say, give him. He He's the man who can uh, really make it happen. Yes, that not many people are there. So immediately we got the budget. So I'm lucky. And we are now going to finish it up. But the problem, uh, end of the project, the government budget finished. I don't know why their allocation completed, 80% project done. Now 20%, if I go back, I'll not get money or I'll get money after five years, who knows. <laughs> then I came back with my award, that uh, Robert Matthew Award, you know, this is one of the highest honor in the world. So many people come, came to me with flowers and caves in my office. 
And everywhere, if the company came with a rich company, I asked them, I, I, I sold my award to them. Like, you came here, you have to pay. You have to pay uh, uh, something for me so I can develop the project, you can complete the project. And I'm so lucky that a few people came up and they donated amount of money that we are going to complete the project maybe another three, four months. Wow. So this is how I can celebrate my honor, my award also I can uh, <coughs> for my community purpose actually. Mm -hmm. What the use of getting award if it is not uh, benefiting other community, other people? Mm -hmm. So this is interesting, you know, I'll share the project some other time probably. Sure, sure sir. Yeah. Okay. We'll be looking uh, forward <laughs> for that project. It's wonderful, yeah. sir. Actually, even here, sir, like uh, the local municipal authorities, yeah. so the Hindu crematoriums, uh, uh, the space for ritual, the space, uh, it, it was uh, used to be shabby. So now uh, many architects uh, have come up with some solutions and just implementing it. And now uh, even those spaces are little uh, like uh, organized. Yes, yeah, organized and uh, what do you say, look and feel also. So yeah. architecture makes a lot of difference to wherever it touches, sir. And architects has that power and yes, sir. You showed him the power. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And also when when you made everyone to donate, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so definitely very inspiring, sir. very inspiring. Your life uh, journey is very inspiring and yeah, sure. Sir, sir we have some questions in the chat box. Yeah, One, please. Yes, sir. Now from Nahari Nehmet, the question is, uh, do you think we should go back to the courtyard concept as we had it in the ancient times, as mentioned uh, by you, Vastu Shastra, and is it possible from your point of view? <clears throat> courtyard and the relation with nature, is it possible in the high-rise building? Do you see a possibility uh, technically? Uh, I can't say it's not possible. There's no word I can utter that's not possible. <laughs> Everything uh, possible based on science, based on uh, context, based on requirement, uh, based on climatology. So you have to examine. I, I tell you, I gone through one Hindu scripture, I remember, I don't remember exactly the book name now, but I gone through, I found that it says, uh, who is an architect? A definition of an architect, it will be relevant answer probably, that uh, if you ask uh, who is a, a painter, we know who, who does painting or actor or whatever you say, engineer, but who is an architect? So it's very confu confusing actually, who, who does construction, who does only design, only, uh, no computer expert or whatever. It's very difficult to understand that Hindu scripture says is an architect, he or she is the most knowledgeable person of the community. Mm. The, our power is knowledge actually. Oh. We judge when you do airport or when you do a park, <laughs> when you crematorium or a mosque or a temple, we must gain knowledge what is a temple, what is religion, what is airport, what is plane, you know. Bus, is, uh, uh, bus is stop. So what is bus? How it moves? Its technical parts and its social part. So architects is based on knowledge. So if your knowledge says that you need to do art courtyard for many reasons, for many benefit, you have to do it. If you think no, this is not necessary here. There are other things which is more important, and then it justifies uh, the living environment. You can avoid the courtyard also. So I don't have any prescription, but I have that you have to judge it yourself. The architect is, is, is the best judge, actually. Knowledge, knowledge is knowledge. <laughs> yeah. uh, That is really uh, true and very valuable. We have another uh, question, we have query from our uh, fourth year student, Hendavi. Uh, she is asking that uh, firstly she's saying very good presentation, very valuable. And how will you set as an architect set priorities and make decisions? Her uh, question is and the next question. Uh, pardon priority to make decision. <clears throat> yes, set priorities and make decisions. Okay. 
uh, we must our mind setup needs to be changed nowadays uh, arch in, uh, initially architects you what they they were actually they were a servant of the rich people <laughs> historically you see architects are the servant of the rich people they are asking a, a, a palace to design or uh, king akbar emperor akbar or any like uh, i don't remember i, I don't want to say any names uh, now but their order following the order mostly but now we are becoming architect of the common people if you don't do that the community people they don't need architects if you uh, form a small committee <coughs> in, the, in the community to serve the community they will ask for political leader to get some help political uh, they will ask an engineer they will ask rich people to have some money and finally they <coughs> ask sweeper also sweeper to clean the community but i don't think nobody will ask we need an architect you in the small community also because they don't know architect they don't know the performance or the activity of an architect they think if you ask them tell them we need an architect everybody will tell you we don't need an architect because we don't have money and we are not going to build anything <laughs> the architect's role is also not to build anything that is also architect's job that you have to prove so that's why the priority setting is the people of the community how to serve them and become architect of the common people rather than architect of the rich people like so that. every community activity architect can do something they can create some they can plant a nice tree proper tree which tree is a meaningful tree i don't know they will judge they will uh, do some research and then plant a nice tree people will understand wow this tree we are not able to plant this tree we may be planting wrong tree but this guy so we need this guy with this this architect so this is how we need to prioritize our thinking whom we are going to serve and how we are going to serve no matter we are building or non building it doesn't matter yeah yes Hope thank you for the answer Yes, and yes, the wonderful answer. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, anybody else has any questions? Well, yes. actually, uh, I would like to share one experience. Like, um, uh, I I had met you physically during in Gurugao when I was studying masters in interior architecture in Sushant School of Art and Architecture. So our college had a organized FAP fest 2018. So <clears throat> that time also physically, like I had uh, attended your session. Oh yeah. 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 Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That time our dean was Dr. Vibhuti Sachdev. Vibhuti, so, Vibhuti was there, Dr. Vibhuti. Yes, yes. But it was wonderful. Nice college, nice school. Yeah. So Thank that, uh, yes, yes, it was really, a uh, wonderful uh, experience and then uh, I had in my mind ki if I ever get an opportunity I will try to connect with you so that uh, <clears throat> and uh, it's really uh, I'm really obliged and honored that I had you. this excellent session here today I'm humble also very humble <laughs> so everybody I really thank all of you uh, it's so, amazing to share ideas with you and be yourself actually architecture is not something uh, coming up from heaven or something somewhere else is within us and we can create something without creating anything also we must understand if you can say no i should not build here anything it should be like a crop field like a crop field uh, and this if this is appropriate then you have done the right architecture mm -hmm. that you believe if you started believing that you will be it will become your conviction you know without conviction you can't proceed actually so you must create your own belief that what you want to how you want to see the world and to to dream like that you have to do a lot of research a lot of study it might take 20 years 25 30 years you know uh, don't give up because you are not a cricket player <laughs> like just uh, after 30 you are uh, almost disappeared or you are retired or you are not valid actually that much you know except few 
Mm. But you are just started when you are 40. You are, you are just young architects. Mm. The whole world will tell you young architects, 40, 45. There are a lot of competitions. 45 is considered young architects. So you will become not young when you are 50. And you will become matured architect when you are actually 60. <laughs> but one thing I must tell you, like I'm almost like uh, 58 and 58 running. But the most important thing from now on, you need to be careful regarding your body, your health, your mental health and physical health. When you are really rich, I mean, intellectually rich, you have acquired knowledge, uh, empirical knowledge, hands-on knowledge. You are ready to give something really substantial to the community, but you are very weak. Mm. Your bodily, mentally, you are un you are not fit. You are unfit. That whole accumulation will be a a, a waste simply, no use actually. So you need to be very careful. Everything should be synchronized in a way. You are you taking good food. You are taking health uh, care proper exercise or whatever, walking, physically fit and mentally fit also. Then acquiring knowledge, uh, I mean empirical knowledge or uh, academic knowledge. And intuition will be developed gradually, your own intuition. Mm -hmm. And one day all will be accumulated when you are 50 or 55, you will see you become a atomic bomb. <laughs> a lot of energy. You can, you can deliver to the community. You can change in a, like a magician. You can change your community. You can see, uh, I'm not doing anything like that. I, I, nobody told me like that earlier. So I could have been much powerful architect, which I am not today. But it's still when I see the children are laughing and playing over there, the parts I have done a lot, uh, it feels like amazing a feeling. Now you from distance, you can see all playing, walking, jogging, talking, eating, drinking. And behind you, behind everything, you are the person who has actually taken the initiative. It's unbelievable emotional thing actually. So I have got many awards. Nowadays, I don't remember even. I don't want to remember actually. <coughs> Probably somebody counted like 60, 60 international awards probably i'm not i'm not telling because i have to prove myself no i'm telling you because it's all meaningless to me nowadays meaningful thing is that i have done something children are laughing they are la they are running after butterflies not drugs and that is my award actually at least i have got it something <coughs> and happily want to die simply <laughs> death is very interesting actually if you want to plan your life you must plan your death also one day <laughs> you know you, if you plan your life it might not happen accordingly if eventually uh, accordingly if you plan a beautiful death it might not happen eventually uh, accordingly but doesn't matter you know as a planner you can plan the beautiful life <laughs> and one stage at a beautiful death also. Sorry, students, I don't think about death. Only you think about life. After 50, you may start thinking about that. Not, not now, please. No, sir, you advice, <laughs> advice on health was very, uh, yeah. very good, sir. Like, actually, yeah. very good uh, advice. <clears throat> and many a times I tell my students that uh, uh, whenever you look at uh, uh, architects who are very successful, uh, everyone is past 90. Yeah. Very long life because uh, they are happy. They are happy by seeing uh, the work that they have done. So they are not at all in stress. They enjoy their work. Yeah. Uh, so I've seen, uh, I uh, keep on telling them that architecture is a very long career. So yeah. you should um, plan very, for it. Yeah. yeah. Plan, plan for it. Plan for it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much, sir. Thank you. Yes, yes, I would. Uh, yeah. uh, I think, uh, yeah, few uh, more comments have come from, like, uh, firstly, they have said beautifully said and beautiful. <coughs> and again, from Nahari Nama, the, the question, last question is, uh, 
architecture is so wide, so vast and abstract. How do you find and summarize all the thoughts while designing? Oh, yeah, that's that's a struggle actually. It's architecture, as Louis, I can say, it starts with unmeasurable. It's floating in the sky. Nobody knows what is going to happen. You know what we're going to build, how we are going to build. So it starts like thinking, and thinking always uh, important if you are rich. Your knowledge is rich. You have a you have a hard drive, and you have a lot of things uh, studied uh, in the drive. You can take out and think and coordinate. And finally, you see when you see the the person or the people, the family, the community smiling. If you see from your eyes, visualize that people are smiling after building or non-building those that thing. Uh, then you summarize. Yes, I can proceed. So at that point, you need to think of, is it grounded? It is coming out from the ground. It is not coming from China or some, uh, some other planet. It's coming from the ground like a tree. Yes, then one step done. Is it justifying my climate? Is it justifying my economy, my people's culture? You know, they have a culture, they have a tradition. You cannot create a new tradition out, out of nothing. Of course, if you do something really great, this will gradually, after 50, 60, 100 years, may create another tradition because of you, but you cannot see probably. So if you think that people are happy, people are simply can manage it, can build it, can acquire it, and climate is not destroyed by your activity, then you can summarize that, yes, I can go for it. You have to ask questions. You can write down the questions. And then you tick mark or your answers, you know, all these things, and then you can start. This is how we summarize actually. Even <coughs> I started writing like, is uh, the, the first sentence probably, uh, I don't know. I, I, I started project like that. What to do? I don't know. I'm blank. I want to run out. I don't want to do the work. I don't understand. All this answer I, I started writing. Then I started said, no, I can do it this, because this one thing is important. So this is how I started writing 20, 30, 40 things. This is how I come to some sort of summarize actually. Every time I think from the zero, I don't think from I have done something, I don't carry the luggage and baggage. And then I started from there. No, I don't do that. I always start thinking from zero. That's why I take a pause even. After one project, I talk, take a pause, and I sleep, I drink good meal, I take good meal, I roam around one day, not doing nothing, and then start one another project. It's very difficult from trans transition, you know, from one to another project. It's very challenging, you know. We are always love our own, we fall in love our own projects. Yes. And our ideas, yes. and then, we don't justify, we just like a blind uh, lover we started loving our own thing <clears throat> and uh, continuing and putting uh, giving to other people who who doesn't require the, those things. <laughs> and so every we, time we, what is your best project, it is still to come. <laughs> true, 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 like uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, yes. Yes, sir. It's like that, yes. So true. many architects experience is that, okay, what is your best work, it is still to come because I think I, I could have done it better, whatever I have done. It's true, true, true. Okay. Uh, yes. yes, sir. Thanks. Thanks. Just some small closure. So I would uh, like to express my appreciation to all the participants and, uh, for, and our guest speaker for taking out their time from their busy schedule. Now, be, on behalf of Geetam School of Architecture, I would like to close my remarks and officially announce the end of today's webinar, wishing you all the future prosperity. And I extend my further gratitude to our esteemed guest speaker for today and all the faculty of School of Architecture, Hyderabad and Vishakhapatna. Thank you so much for your attention. Stay safe, stay healthy. Signing off, this is your today's host, Nikhara. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.